Welcome to the Workplace Minute, powered by H3 HR Advisors and sponsored by Paychex, one of the leading providers of HR, payroll, retirement, and software solutions for businesses of all sizes. My name is Steve Bose. CEO compensation continues to rise at nonprofit healthcare organizations. Nearly half of hospitals in the U.S. are designated as nonprofits, which means that they don't pay local, state, or federal taxes. And in return for this classification, these hospitals provide medical care considered to be a social benefit in their communities. They're also expected to provide some charitable care to patients who are unable to pay and deliver services that promote community health, such as vaccine clinics and cancer screenings. However, the nonprofit designation and their community-focused missions, the CEOs in charge of many of these nonprofit hospitals received hefty compensation with many now clearing $1 million in annual salary, and these salaries keep rising. Compensation for CEOs of nonprofit hospitals and medical systems grew by 30% between 2012 and 2019, according to a new study from Rice University's Baker Institute for Public Policy. That means the average paycheck for a top nonprofit executive went from just under $1 million to $1.3 million, according to health economists at Rice University. These large compensation packages for hospital CEOs aren't necessarily a problem if nonprofit health systems consistently deliver on their mission, which is to provide quality and affordable care. But some research indicates that these high salaries may be incentivizing CEOs to make decisions that don't always benefit patients, at least according to another study published by Rice University in 2023, which showed that larger hospital profit margins don't result in more charity care being provided in their communities. One important question Americans need to reckon with is whether the nonprofit medical systems achieving often substantial profit margins are doing so at the expense of their missions in their communities, subverting the intended purposes of their tax exempt status. Other reports have shown many of these nonprofits are working and acting much more like their for profit peers in the hospital industry. By failing to notify patients that they qualify for financial assistance before attempting to collect on outstanding payments, garnishing patient wages to collect past due fees, or even cutting people off from non-emergency care. Ultimately, how much a nonprofit hospital CEO should be paid is a philosophical question, notes professors of health policy and management at Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. For many analysts, this salary study provides more evidence that the boundaries between nonprofit and for profit health systems in the U.S. have become too blurry, with the nonprofits operating too much like for profits. More calls are being made for elected officials to do more to force nonprofit health care to deliver on its promises to taxpayers and to their local communities. Through inaction, government regulators have allowed the system to become more profit driven. But until changes are made in the regulation of these nonprofits, the trend towards higher CEO salaries is likely to continue because generous compensation rewards these nonprofit CEOs for maintaining the current status quo. We will continue to follow healthcare and all the important topics and trends in the world of work here on the HR Happy Hour Media Network. That's it for the Workplace Minute, powered by H3HR Advisors.